been kind of preoccupied. Like I, I, I've been watching a couple of shows lately. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been watching Shogun, <laughs> and um, I discover we're gonna we're, we'll talk about Fallout a bit. Um, I don't know if I put it on the rundown yet or not, but um. It's been, let me just say that I was, uh, I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. Oh my gosh, I have so many Chrome windows open. What am I going to do? <laughs> oh, right. It's a lot easier for, for me to share the stream when I'm not using my, uh, my camera as our, like, or my phone as our main camera. Yeah, that's true. There's always trade-offs. All right. Let's go, shall we? I think we shall. You won't be able to hear the, the intro, but... That's fine. <laughs> that's going to get through on your audio and screw everything up. That's all right. <laughs> Welcome back to Jedi Enclave. I'm Daniel. I'm Chris. And uh, we're uh, the hosts of your weekly uh, Jedi Enclave Presents Now. This is Podcasting Podcast Live show where we talk about Star Wars and other sci-fi uh, fantasy adjacent things that uh, interest us. We have not done a remote show like this in quite some time, actually. Yeah. And but circumstances have warranted. Yeah, I've, I've got a sick dog and... Um, who actually just came downstairs and is sitting right behind you now. Yeah, he's he's doing better. So the reason that I uh, I was going to cancel the show altogether because I really thought that I was going to be taking him to a vet uh, today, but he his condition improved enough where I felt like I could wait for the his actual like scheduled appointment. So um, it, as a result, I've not I've not slept well in two days. I'm very very tired uh, and I'm achy and I am old and bitter now. <laughs> I just want to go to bed. Uh, so anyway, it's okay because we have Star Wars to sustain. Yeah, us. actually, specifically, uh, we got some Star Wars news. Um, we're going to talk about, of course, Bad Batch season three, episode thirteen, which uh, just came out today. And then um, we're we're going to take a couple of minutes to talk about Fallout. Okay. Because uh, that's a show that I've um, that I've discovered that. It ended up being like way better than I thought it uh, like I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. uh, so, th like I finished it last night, and I was like, "Oh, that's that wasn't." Not only was that not half bad, it was like more than like half good. Like it was it was like pretty solid. Uh, so, if you're here uh, for the uh, the official release of our podcast, which happens on Saturdays. Uh, usually about 6 p.m. There will be time codes in the description. You can jump around and uh, listen to the parts that you want and discard the parts that you don't. And uh, a thank you to Connor at the Star Wars Hub and Star Wars Veritas, who is in many ways uh, a personal hero of mine. Go check his stuff out. And uh, while you're here and while you're being uh, benevolent, if you could give us a like and subscribe. and uh, You can join us on Discord. The... Yeah. Um, the link to that's in our uh, uh, in our description, and uh, we we share lots of memes. And you can see all the memes that are too raunchy to go on the Facebook page. Yeah, I put I put some raunchy memes on Facebook too. It's funny, it, like someone was like, um, uh, like you post a lot of other people's memes, and it's like, well, first of all, it's the internet. That's, that's whatever like that's kind of what you do but also i i always consider our facebook page uh, in in addition to like talking about our own content because we produce original content every week uh, it's also a, re a repository of of high quality memes so like i don't post every star wars meme i see i only we, post we, the we ones curate. that yeah yeah exactly we're, we're meme curators i don't i don't pretend like they're my memes and if you're really that worried about it like if you're about to make a meme and you're worried about some Star Wars content creator posting it without giving you credit for it or whatever, put a fucking watermark on it. And we don't have to fucking worry about it. Yeah. Um, after this, I do think we're playing uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, not you and I, uh, but um, a couple of guys from Gremlin Squad and then uh, Gungans and Dragons 
uh, this Sunday at 7, um, which uh, we took a break last week, which is fine because I played I played like an hour of the... Um, uh, yeah, on my, my Jedi shadow build, who I ended up making a Chiss, but <laughs> n- not because like that's who I've been playing in Gungans and Dragons. It's just because mm-hmm. I like I thought you looked kind of cool. So, um, fair enough. So yeah, uh, and then I think that's about it. We're gonna get into uh, some some Star Wars news, um, and so I kind of took notes on all of this because I wasn't sure if you would have enough time today to like to look at everything. You know what? You just go ahead and I'll chime in when the spirit okay. takes me. Okay, perfect. All right. So uh, we're going to talk about this uh, this week's, um, I don't know, maybe we should like do a new, like a, a new, like special segment. And it'll be like <laughs> the Star Wars Acolyte related, like weekly, <laughs> the Star Wars Acolyte weekly watch. Uh, sure. Because it's like, stuff's warming up for that show. It's going to be out uh, like before you realize. And in fact. Um, June, right? Yeah, early June. It, yeah. it, r- right around when uh, House of the Dragon season two comes out. Yeah, so that's like a month and a half. Right, which um, I. So we're going to be in Star Wars mode for d- at least until after May the Fourth, because that's when um, uh, right or uh, Tales, Tales of the Empire. Of the Empire yeah, yep. but um, w- as we get closer, we are going to go into Game of, Game of Thrones mode uh, for a while, and uh, it, I've got some. We're gonna do some recapping in a in a different way than we than we usually do. But um, Star Wars Acolyte comes out within a week of House of the Dragon season two, so we're gonna have a lot of, like a lot of shit to talk about. Yeah. Um. This, but the fact that it's like it's gonna be here fairly soon, they're talking about it a lot. Um. And uh, Empire Magazine, uh, did uh release some new images and some interview uh, type things. It was the cover story. Yeah. Um, which Empire Magazine does a lot of Star Wars stuff, uh, yep. and it's it's pretty cool. But um, they so they're, they're kind of I think they're trying to prime everyone what to expect from this, um, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure if it's because like they're like you know we're not really sure if it's very clear from the trailer what this <laughs> is, uh, which I think is kind of silly. But they're like okay guys listen like this is a mystery thr- thriller, mm-hmm. and it's kind of a slow burn. Uh, mm-hmm. And there's going to be like lots of s- surprises and twists, right? Which mm-hmm. for me is always like th- that's like them talking to the really impatient part of the Star Wars fandom, who are like, "Look, like we're setting some real story to be happening over this the you know the the course of the first season. Mm-hmm. So like, just because everything doesn't explode in every episode." Like it's it's all right, kind of like Andor, right? Yeah, I was gonna say number one. This sounds an awful lot like what the Andor people were saying about their show before it came out. Yeah, and number two, this is exactly what Leslie Headland and her entire team have been saying the entire time that the show is gonna be, you know, a, a mystery. It's gonna be a cop drama and and all that mystery thriller. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So it, like, there's got like apparently there are like elements of like de- like detective kind of stuff um there were a couple of d- images as well because it, like most people know that daphne keen uh, uh playing uh, a character called jackie lawn um who apparently described her character as the uh, the david bowie like as like a Je- jedi david bowie if you if you look at the picture she does kind of look like ziggy stardust yeah <laughs> right um, and she she appears in uh, a couple of images with another Jedi character called Yord Fandar, who uh, apparently she's more competent at Jedi things than him. And, yeah. Um, so, which is one of those big cop tropes, right? Like the the junior is is actually better at the job. Yeah, than the, the actual yeah the actual detective. And then uh, Carrie Ann Moss and uh, Amanda Stenberg talked about their characters a little bit. I, I liked how um, Carrie Ann Moss is like, yeah. I based her off of Trinity. <laughs> Cause I was, like she didn't say that in those words, but she basically Yeah, said and she could have said those words exactly, and I would have been like, all right, sweet. Um, all right, I'm in. I, I, I approve. That'd be great, because <laughs> I think Trinity might be my favorite part of the um, uh, of the Matrix uh, movies. The ones that I like, which is the like the three, and then like mm-hmm. the one that happened recently I really kind of hate, but... That's an entirely different conversation. Yeah. Otherwise, 
Um, and uh, they were talking about their female villains, and it's a like a Sith-led story. What's really funny is anytime this comes up on social media now, like there's a there's that population of people that really want this to do poorly, and they're really pissed off that everyone's so excited about it, right? Like, oh, what's with all these women and people of color in my Star Wars back in my day? Blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah, and, and the one thing was like, well, I mean, how is it the Sith if uh, in Episode One, Kiati Mundi was like, well, the Sith have been extinct for a millennium? It's like the Jedi don't know everything. Yeah, it, oh, fuck. That's it's why like they lost the entire system of Kamino. Yeah, it's like you you lack a so you lack like a three dimensional ability to think. Like that was the whole point, was that everyone was like, "Those can't be the Sith. They've been gone forever." And yet, what did we find out about those characters? They were, they Sith. were Sith, right? And that was the whole point, was that they had existed without the Jedi knowing. And that doesn't that doesn't really have an effect. Like that that doesn't impact the this story in any meaningful way, other than I think probably most of these Jedi will probably end up dying. Anyone who finds out that it's actually the Sith is certainly going to be dead. Anyone who's able to confirm it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, I don't know. It's it, that like that does it, it's kind of like people who who like uh, purposefully misunderstand uh, the the part of the Last Jedi where like Ray asks Luke and also Ben or Kylo at that point, um, like what happens between them, mm-hmm. and they both have different stories. Yeah, and everyone. Like the people who who purposefully misunderstand this always go with Kylo Ren's account of events when it's like you understand that he's not a reliable narrator. Like even if he didn't have an agenda, his perception of reality at that point was kind of warped by Snoke. Yeah, so, so... It, it's like you know that that Luke wasn't standing there getting ready to murder him, and then just because he woke up, that's why he didn't do it. Yeah. Right. It's 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 kind of the same thing here. It's just like I I'm tired of people being like, what what really surprises me are the, the amount of people who are like, oh, the show sucks, and it's like, shut the fuck up. You haven't, I haven't even seen it. What the fuck? You haven't seen it. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> um. So they also talked about there's a force witch, uh, mm-hmm. Mother Anasaya. Uh, who is not, apparently, and they were careful to say this, not a night sister of Dathomir. Okay. So uh. Th- it's and this is also fine too like there there's bound to be several different sects of force using force worshiping yeah. you know kind of people so they're expanding the universe yeah. which is exactly what you want writers of new material to be doing yeah did you see the picture of jackie lon with a boken yes that was pretty cool that's pretty cool i lost Speaking lost, of... lost one of my front teeth to a boken once Speaking of uh, Jackie Lon, uh, Daphne Keene has some some fun quotes in that feature about how they were trying to, like, how in her mind the most iconic Star Wars lightsaber duel is Darth Maul versus Qui Gon and Oh Obi-Wan, man, which, oh this is I disagree with, but but yeah. I, I can see the argument. And everyone's and how, everyone's freaking out about this, but go yeah. ahead. And, and how like they were trying to make something for acolyte that would be you know on that level or cooler and mm-hmm. yeah what and i like think th- that, that gets me very excited in a lot of ways yes. now what what people what some people heard from that was oh they think that this is better than episode one and that's not what they said no what they said was that they're they're trying to they're trying to live up to the like th- that that style of of combat because yeah. like combat in star wars has a visual language that evolves through each each trilogy right so like the yeah. like the prequel trilogy the jedi are a lot more light on their feet and they're a lot more acrobatic and they're like they they know like they're very well trained and then you have like luke in the original trilogy who has no idea what the fuck he's doing he's kind of flailing with something right. vaguely re- resembling kendo yeah um for, for a new hope and then like as they go on they they introduce different kinds of of like martial arts and and uh, weapon arts mm-hmm. and then you get to like this the sequel trilogy where um again like you know palpatine worked very hard to make sure that every trace of the jedi at least as much as he could manage every trace of the jedi was gone mm-hmm. and so there is like there's nowhere that you can find 
uh, you know, the traditional classical Jedi training. And so as a result, like it, the, the combat is like, I don't want to say like, it's, it's not clumsy, but it's a lot heavier. It's right? unrefined. I y- think. Yeah. And it's like lots of big, heavy swings and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's like, it's a lot more visceral and everything. So it like, I, and I think that they want to make, I think that they want to make a, a, a lightsaber duel that will stop people in their tracks in the same way that like the old school uh, prequel trilogy lightsaber duels did because sure. they were you know they were big spectacles and everything so and like part part of the point of the whole high republic setting is that this is the jedi at their their best right. so y- we should expect to see some really you know acrobatic and physically impressive lightsaber stuff yeah. going on because yeah. this is the jedi being able to do that yeah uh, so also the fun thing in in those Daphne Keen questions is uh, apparently she did the Ewan McGregor thing where she was making the lightsaber noise with her, with her mouth yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like had a huge grin on her face yeah. the whole time, which I can totally sympathize yep. with because if if I was there on that set being a Jedi in Star Wars, I would just yeah. be shitty and grin yep. the whole time. Yeah, I, I think I would probably do the same thing as well. Uh, so yeah, the that show comes out June fourth. Of course, we'll be talking about it when it comes out. Um, the the thing that I'm real pissed off about is that the episodes are 30 minute episodes. And it's. I really wish Disney would stop doing that because it. Like, if you're, you're this is a, this is the thing that makes me worried, right? Not, not just saying that the show is going to suck just because you're pissed off that other people are excited for it. Mm-hmm. Thirty minutes is not long enough if you're trying to make a really serious narrative-driven story. If you're going to do thirty-minute episodes and only eight of them, like. So, like, Andor, for example, they did longer episodes. And as a result, the storytelling was more rich. It didn't feel, didn't it, not once ever did the storytelling in Andor feel rushed. Or, like, things just appear ex machina or, or whatever, right? So, that's, that's the one thing I'm kind of, like, trep- like I, I have some trepidation over. I hear you. I think there are ways to do it, like, in terms of the scale of the story you're telling, where if you, as long as you don't try to tell too many subplots you can make it work but it's got to be yeah. lean yeah but it's yeah. also like yeah so uh, chris says may the force be with you daniel and chris if you're having a good night and thank you for both being or uh, thank you both for the awesome content the sequel trilogy lightsaber duels are like a street fight they are like just a, like a brawl yeah. like yeah i mean the fight club the fucking ray and kylo versus the praetorian guard in last jedi yeah or even even their duel together in rise of skywalker on the death star ruins is yeah. like they're just like trying to beat the shit out of each other and it, it's you know in 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 the prequel tr- trilogy it's about like winning the fight but also looking real fucking fly while you're doing it right <laughs> like looking real cool and that's just like you can tell uh Ray and Kylo Ren just beating down on one another. They don't give a fuck who's watching, who thinks they look cool. They're just literally trying to beat the shit out of each other. Well, in Kylo's case, like you can justify it through the plot being that like he's just always angry all uh, the yeah, time, yeah. and that comes out in his fighting. Yeah. And Ray in some of those Rise of Skywalker fights is is getting closer to the dark side than she might want to admit. So it makes sense for her yeah. too. L- little emo ball of rage, yeah. Kylo Ren. All right. So speaking of da- Daisy Ridley. Um, yeah. She's been giving little tidbits about her new Jedi Order movie over the last few weeks, and apparently the script is finished, or at least in a state where she can read it. Yes, and like, there might be another revision or two coming, but yeah, uh, it, it it's at least a script and not a treatment, right? Yeah, uh, be, and so she knows. Apparently, she knows the story beats, the like the general story beats of the film, and then someone was like, "Well, when are you going to read the, the the script?" And she's like, "Oh yeah, like next month." I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so she was talking to Empire Magazine as well. Um, and, you, you know, like, I feel bad for Daisy Ridley because she is trying so hard to be excited for this. Mm-hmm. And watching her talk about it is really cool because she seems really positive about it. And she kind of like, uh, she seems like she's trying to be above all the bullshit that comes with this because you know that like there's there's just that crowd that it doesn't matter it could be the best it could be the best movie that, that the human race has ever created it, like ob- objectively the best movie 
and there are still some people who'd be like sucks yeah and it's you know and ha- like when you're arguing with bad faith actors like that like how do you even deal with it you know so you she's say bye felicia and yeah. move on. so she's trying to like stay above it all and and kind of bring some some excitement and some positivity to the whole thing and yeah. um i think it's interesting uh the ray isn't so i say that ray isn't necessarily my favorite star wars character in general sure like like i like her i thought daisy ridley did a fine job um in fact i think that daisy ridley as she goes through the sequel as she goes through the trilogy personally as an actor gets better and better Right. Sure. She was like what, twenty years old or something when yeah. they filmed Force Awakens. Right. Yeah. And it, I don't think she had had like a serious film credit yeah. to her name. So, uh, so she had done a ton of learning as she was going yeah. through the trilogy. And you know, I've seen her in other movies. Like she was in um, uh, Murder on the Orient Express, and she's in a couple of other things I saw her in where I was like, "You're actually a talented actor. Like you're, you know, yeah. you're you're good at that." So there, there's the whole race. Like there, you know. The, the Mary Sue crowd will never shut up because, you know, if people are having fun, th- that no one's watching them, right? No one's paying attention to them. They're, they're yeah. you know, watching something else and that makes them upset. So um, I just, I guess I really appreciate that she's being so positive about it and she's being so excited about it. And uh, like any other thing, I mean, like, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a fair shake because we, like, we've when a star wars movie comes out that we don't like which i think there's been one right like we say that one and a half maybe depending on how you feel about solo yeah um like we like we say it you know it's like rise of skywalker i didn't fucking like that movie it's my yeah but it's like i don't need to i don't need to construct my entire identity around hating that one movie where like every comment that i make on social media has to eat regardless of if it's at all related to star wars i have to make sure everyone understands that i hate the last jedi or whatever yeah. because it's like it's the like that, that's your defining characteristic is that you hate this one movie and it's really sad and it it just it's also really puzzling too i also want to make one last point uh it's kind of daisy ridley's job to be really positive about yeah. this movie given that she's an executive producer on it right well i don't know Cause like, I mean, eh. you think you think Harrison Ford gets real excited about shit that he's exa- like that he produces and stuff. No, but Harrison Ford gets excited about one thing, and that is flying planes. Yeah, <laughs> while very very high. <laughs> well, you know that just enhances the experience. Yeah. All right, we got to talk about Star Wars Outlaws because I'm so pissed oh. off about this, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm I, so pissed. About I him. saw this and I could not believe how stupid they were being about it. You know, it's um, uh. I, I'm pissed, yet entirely unsurprised, right? So here's the thing. We know that uh, Star Wars Outlaws comes out August 30th, um, and uh, it's like, being... Like all AAA games, it has DLC, it has a season pass where you can get all this extra content for your game. Yeah. For, you know, 40 extra bucks or whatever. Right. Um, hold on just a second. Um so ubisoft is in charge of this mm-hmm. which we we were ringing alarm bells big red flag yeah right, away. right so of course they're doing a live service fucking model with this game that has a of season course. pass mm-hmm. that has content of the game locked behind it mm-hmm. uh, in this case having to do with jabba the hut yep now i'm going to tell you a little story chris Please do. So, little, I'm here for it. Little, little story time with 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 Daniel. We're gonna sit in front of my fireplace right here. I'm gonna mm-hmm. get in my comfy chair. I'm gonna open the book and tell you about the story of Star Wars Battlefront Two. Okay. And this happened in 2015. Yep. N- where, nine years ago. Yeah. You mean to say? Oh, uh, not 15. 17. Okay, so still. 2017. Yeah. Ago. Yeah. 2017. Uh, it was the anticipated sequel to the battlefront 2015 which mm-hmm. had a season pass model like this um that people weren't they were pissed off about anyway uh in the fact that 
like there was no campaign in the game. It was only online content, and there wasn't very much of it. There weren't very many characters to play and shit. Um, so everyone was very excited that we were going to have a game that had more characters. That fucking first trailer came out, and they have this, like, Darth Maul shows up, Yoda shows up. Like, they're going to fucking fight each other and staring each other down. And you're like, I hadn't even ever considered them fighting one another. Like, that's fucking awesome. I mean, Yoda would obviously win, but... Right. And so they, they put the beta out, the open beta, and, like, as they're doing that, EA Dice is like, oh, uh, and there are loot boxes. Bye. And Ooh. gamers lost their shit because it was pay to win. And also, I think people are really tired of paying 80 bucks for a game and not getting all of the fucking content, right? Yeah. And so everyone freaked out about it. And uh, a in, an EA executive went on Reddit. Oh, God to defend the practice that they were doing. And his his thing pretty much was, so like everyone's like, you understand that like, the way the game is right now, you've got to play, you have to grind for like 40 hours before you can unlock Darth fucking Vader. The one character everyone's showing up to play, which is, they knew that, right? It yeah. wasn't a fucking accident had to play the game for like 30 or 40 hours to unlock that son of a bitch unless you paid to you know to to get the loot box or whatever yep and so he this ea exec got on reddit and was like well actually we want our players to feel a, a sense of pride and accomplishment and his comment uh was and still is the most downvoted reddit thread in the history of Reddit. <laughs> which is insane. Yes. When you consider uh people people have a There's code a about a lot of shit posted on Reddit. Yeah. Like every single day. And and people are like Reddit's a weird a weird animal in the social media because like people people kind of care about giving like like upvoting or downvoting stuff. Like it, like it actually matters, right? Like there's a whole yeah. ethos about it and everything. Um, and so here we are again. It's 2024. Has the gaming industry learned its lesson? Because yeah. remember, Battlefront, uh, like that, that Reddit post happened. EA Dice was like, oh, fuck. What are we going to do? Plus the audience, we need to do something. Right. So like, uh, so like, a, like, I don't know, like a week before the game came out, they're like, we have to take the, we have to take the loot boxes out. Because they're gonna they're gonna come to our house and kill our wives like yeah. like this is serious, and so like a week before the game came out, they're like we've taken uh, we've destroyed the entire game economy, the loot boxes don't exist. Um, however, uh, we were counting on the revenue from those loot boxes to pay for the DLC, uh, and so now there's no DLC. We're gonna drip feed over the like like three years or something. Yeah. We're gonna drip feed content and uh it's string players along and when p the player's goodwill uh even starts even starts slightly to turn in our favor we're going to stop supporting the game so what what you just said that is the argument that every major publisher and developer uses to justify their incredibly shitty predatory yeah business plans like we need the extra money to make this game yep. the solution is games should be smaller yeah. they should be cheaper to make they should be less intensive in every way they shouldn't involve developers working fucking 60 or 80 hour weeks for yeah. months on end games should just be small yeah or and just accept that the games are smaller and they're better for everyone involved like all the humans involved in making and purchasing this game are getting a better deal because the game is smaller and it is cheaper. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I've I've maintained that I think that uh, seeing like an indie studio doing a Star Wars game would be really cool. Yeah, I um, don't think Disney will ever allow no, it. No, but no, it, no, it no, would no. Be fantastic. no. There's no fucking money in it, and that's the only, that's the only thing they care about. And the like the thing also, it's like like if you're if you're gonna do a large scale game like that, make it a hundred bucks or whatever. Just, just put the price that you are expecting people to pay yeah. to fund your game 
on the box. Right. And then, you know, that you pay 100 bucks. It's a big fucking game. It's a AAA title. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a big thing. You'll be playing it for years or whatever. Uh, and there's that way people know what to expect rather than getting nickel and dimed at yeah. every fucking turn. Yeah. Uh, to which they will reply, well, people won't pay a hundred bucks for a game uh, like right out of the box. That's the point. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? That's your problem. Not my problem. Make a smaller game. Fuckers. That's capitalism. You adapt or you don't fucking like you, you collapse. Right. And yeah. you like, it, it, like none of these guys are interested in in free market capitalism. No. They like they want the version of capitalism where they can't lose and they can only make more money, right? And that's that's pretty much what like what they're doing here is they want they like they want to figure out exactly how much wealth they can extract from you before you break mm-hmm. and go, go right up to that line and almost go over it and extract every single cent that they can, right? And it just, it really drives me with roll. They they did a response to this. And they're like, well, not all the Jabba stuff is behind the season pass. And it's like, that wasn't our complaint. Yeah. Our complaint wasn't, oh, I wanted, I really want to play this game to see Jabba the Hutt. That wasn't our problem with it. Our problem was that there's a season pass, you motherfucker. So why don't you just not do the season pass? It just or drives me up the fucking that, wall. Just include that with the cost of the game. Yeah. Don't offer a half off that doesn't have a third of the game in it. Yeah. And you know what's going to happen is that you, they're going to have a roadmap for this, this fucking uh, se- season pass and, and shit. I think they already do. Uh, of course they do, because that's a big part of the live service thing. Is you, have a, you always have a fucking roadmap and everything. And uh, it never happens. Like, like you'll get like one or two parts into the roadmap and then they'll be like, oh, well, uh, yeah, we've decided. They, they give you an apology JPEG mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, we have to, it, it, it hurts us so much, but we have mm-hmm. to, we have to stop supporting this game. Because not, because not enough of you fuckers bought the fucking season pass so we can't afford to make it. Yeah. Because us brain geniuses up at the business department didn't actually, you know, plan to have enough money to make this. So yeah. Sorry. But but really, in in closing, fuck Ubisoft, and we knew this shit was going to happen. Like we we knew that we said it months ago when we found out that Ubisoft was doing an open world game. Mm-hmm. Here we are. Uh, speaking of games, real quick, uh, Fortnite is uh, getting a Star Wars event. <laughs> Which, Another one. Yeah. Um, you know, because the first they've one done was a few. Palpatine returned. Yeah, well, they've they've done a few. Um, that was so. First of all, like if you're really into Fortnite, that's that's okay. Yeah, that's that's good that's for great. You. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoy it. Yeah, I, I get it. Like I play shitty games too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't actually. That, that's a little bit rude. I know, uh, but like I I'm not like I when I make fun of the whole Fortnite thing, I I'm never making fun of the people playing Fortnite. It's just that Fortnite is is another pillar in this like real predatory uh you know it's the, this is a product meant to extract as much wealth as possible and um, specifically a product meant to get like 12 year olds to grab mommy's credit card out of yep. her purse and, and swipe yep and um and they've they've done they've done some data on this because it's been around long enough and they've done science on this like uh kids at school are bullied if they don't have you know, if if their peer group plays Fortnite, and because like they'll say, oh, but Fortnite's uh, free to play, and that isn't necessarily true, though, is it? Like, because if you want to have the shit that your friends have, you got to pay for it, mm-hmm. and if you don't have it, you get made fun of. Like, like they they have there's serious data on this of kids being bullied in school because they don't like they don't have the like the paid stuff right they did not pay to win and then they go and steal mom and dad's debit card and go and spend hundreds of dollars on a fucking like like on stuff like that it just drives me up and that's the point like it's this is the, like everything is built in a way to target children like that so that they will take mommy and daddy's credit card w- without them knowing and run up a bill yep. it's disgusting so when i see star wars it's doing a Fortnite event. 
my like my immediate reaction is fuck Fortnite. You know what? Fuck Star Wars for being involved in this too. Let's talk about Bad Batch. <laughs> I look, dude. The gaming industry puts me in a bad fucking mood. I'm yeah. like, I'm so tired of this this multi billion dollar industry. Like, you know that the gaming industry makes more money than Hollywood does by like a hundred percent. Like, it it they make so much money, and like all of these it's never enough. And 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 like all of these executives are just like it's it's bad enough that they're they're like conning people out of money but it turns out that they're also like sexual predators and terrible people and are responsible for some of the most disgusting human rights abuses that we've seen in in a working industry like it just yeah. oh, it drives me up the fucking wall and that the, i think the thing that hurts the most is that i love playing video games yeah and just i, I hate that I, i'm put in a situation like that Okay, so uh, Bad Batch today, if you're watching this on the day that we're live, uh, had its 13th episode in the third season uh, called Into the Breach. I think that we're now, what, like two episodes away from the season finale? There's two left after this. Yeah. Um, so if if you've not seen it yet, uh, we're, we're going to spoil it. We're going to kind of talk through it and spoil it. Um, we probably won't spend a... I probably won't go through the fine. T- th- this wasn't like a a monumentally. Yeah, it, it was another one of those slow episodes that was setting up stuff to come later. Right. Yeah. So, um, like, there wasn't, you know, there weren't any big, you know, surprises or, or anything in in this one. Um, but if you've not seen it yet, please go watch. I, I would hate to spoil, you know, if, if there's something in it that you would have preferred to see in in the actual show, as mm-hmm. opposed to me just like talking about it. Like, <laughs> totally valid. I get it. Um, so you know, go watch it and uh, come back when you're uh, when it's spoiled the right way, and then uh, let us know in the comments uh, what you thought about it. Um, so uh, to take a quick stock of everything, okay. Um, Omega is on Tantus, Mount, Mount Tantus. She's yes. she's a prisoner there with the other children. They have children prisoners. There's a child prison because that's what the Empire is. Just in case you weren't yep. clear that the Empire are the baddies. Yeah. Um, the the Bad Batch are what remains of them, which is Hunter, Crosshair, Wrecker, sometimes Echo, mm-hmm. uh, have kidnapped uh, Admiral Rampart from his Former prison. Former Admiral Rampart. Yeah. He Sorry, was Vice Admiral. Vice Admiral yes. uh, Rampart. Uh, with his Ex- stupid Vice fucking... Admiral Rampart, who was for a while prisoner Rampart. Yeah, and he's got his stupid fucking beard. Um, <laughs> they, they've they kidnapped him because they're like, oh, he'll he'll know how to get to Tantus, right? Yeah. So we open on Tantus, um, and uh, there's like there's a shot of a nanny droid. Like, you know how like everything works in on this base? Like, they slide their iPad into a thing, and then like mm-hmm. lets them do something. Yeah. So like, it does the iPad thing, and it like wakes the kids up, right? And uh, the so Omega learns some stuff. Well, like like at the beginning of this, while she's in the vault, she starts talking to to the kids and shit. Mm-hmm. And she talks to there's uh there's a girl who is there's red kid, blue kid, green kid. That is literally true, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, so they're oh, also a little furry baby. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they also have an infant. Kid. Yeah. There's an infant prisoner because. <laughs> Of course there is. Because the Empire. Right. So they're like they're in like a prison, right? And they're there's like an observation deck that looks down on them and they're constantly studied. Yeah. Um and so there's one of the girls is an Iktachi, the one with the, the horns by the chin. Yeah. Um the the guy that dies in episode three, one of them when they go to arrest Palpatine is this is the same race. Um she it's like playing a hologram game. And mm-hmm. uh, Omega's like, the fuck are you doing? And she's like, we're supposed to play this. I don't know why. It's just, and it's a stupid fucking game. Fucking Ubisoft made it. Like, yeah. I had to pay to get this little fucking square here. Fucking space Ubisoft. Yeah, I'm, dude, I'm telling you, I'm going to be on a tear <laughs> against Ubisoft for the rest of my life. And uh, Omega's like, okay, whatever. I don't really care about your game. So she did notice that she has the doll that she made, right? Yeah. And she's like, wait, that's a nice fucking doll. And she's like, yeah, yeah. Do- Dr. fucking Goggles gave it to me. And so immediately Omega's like, uh huh, yeah, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. she she's gonna help us at some point. Yeah. Um. So the other kids named Jax, Sammy, and Baron. Yeah, something like that. 
she she learns about the rules right and yep. uh specifically that they do not want the kids talking to one another don't talk to each other right. do your fucking puzzles all day don't try to escape yeah and so they're like uh you know it's, it's hopeless um like we're you, you know let's not talk and you know we're, we're stuck here forever and i think it's like <laughs> i do not accept that <laughs> so <laughs> we will be breaking out just Strapping just letting you know goes, yeah we are leaving that that is a matter of uh it or a win not if so elsewhere while um on a gas covered world called bora vio um like Which hunter i believe this is where the other the old Cam the like camino cloning facility was that uh in season two yeah what's her name robo abs uh, to, fennec chance yeah brought omega two but i think i think, I think I you I, i'm looking at it real quick yeah i think you're right yeah so anyway um the Bad Batch and Rampart are hanging out. Not as friends, because they really hate Rampart, because he's an absolute dick. So and Rampart hates them, too. Right. So they're, and they're, they're like, trying to figure out what they're doing, like, how they're going to get to Tansis and stuff. And, like, Rampart's like, listen, I don't know how to get there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, I, I know that you guys are really banking on this. I can tell you, I can tell you this much. You pull up to Coruscant. You dock at a special docking bay. They upload the coordinates and then you fuck off to Tantus, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're like, okay, so we'll start there. And Rampart's like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> there are like 10 other steps in there and that is yeah. just the first one. And they're like, and they're like, we'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Like, this is, this is what we do. It's also, we'll improvise. yeah, it's also very, very clear that they all hate Rampart so much. <laughs> they're like, you're such a dick. I hate you. Um, so tensions are high. Mm -hmm. Um, Echo shows up Yep. and he's got a, a, a transport and he's like, I stole a transport for you for your, for our mission. If you'd given me more time, I probably could have found Tantus, but you guys want to go right now. So let's fucking yeah, go. Here and we go. They're like, you're a good, you're, you're good. You're a good dude. So, uh, the plan is that they're gonna they they've got this the stolen thing with the the codes they're gonna dock and they're just gonna go from there right yeah. and hope that everything finds out. like First everything we is show fine. up then we see what happens right so um let's see uh oh there's a scene with Doctor Carr getting a uh, she's getting a blood why do they do a blood sample every fucking day. Chris, explain this to changes? me. I, I don't know. What are they expecting to change? They're doing, like... It, it's like, are there, like, oh, we got to make sure that she's... In-universe science does not have to make sense the way real-world science does. It needs to be internally consistent, at least. I mean, at least a little bit. I just don't understand why they're like, oh, we have to do this every day, because something fundamentally microscopic about your blood might change within know. 24 maybe, hours. Maybe the chlorians die off when it's outside of the body for too long. But they already got the information about Omega that they need. They know. Maybe, the, maybe they, they need more midi chlorians to do something. I don't know. It, yeah, I'm not satisfied with that. Fine, fucking tell you what. Why don't you go to Star Wars Celebration, corner Dave Filoni? <laughs> Listen Star here, motherfucker. You, you tell me how this science works. <laughs> Dave Filoni's answer would be, I don't fucking know. I just, I just look good in a cowboy hat. I'm an atheist. God damn it, I have to know. <laughs> So anyway, Dr. Carr shows up. She's like, I'm going to steal your blood. And she's like, yeah, that's a really weird way of saying you need a blood sample. And she's like, yeah, just deal with it. So uh, while Dr. Carr's not looking, she takes a little tool off her tray. And she's like, this belongs to me now. And she puts it in her sleeve, right? Yep. So out in the, the child prison, mm -hmm. Omega's hanging out with her, her new friends. And she's like figuring out, like the green boy is like, yeah, I tried to escape and then they shot me. And she's like, that seems a little extreme. And he's like, these guys are fucking monsters. What did you expect? So, like, she finds out different things from, you know, like, a, like how far he got and shit. And then, like, have you ever seen, have you ever seen the movie The Last Castle? I don't think so. Okay, if you're, if you're watching this, this may not cater your interest. And that's, that's totally fine. And I'm not going to give you a scene by scene. Fucking, it is actually a really good movie. And it is about a like a, a, a four star general who is who uh, does something that gets him court martialed uh, and sent to a military prison in a castle. Yeah. 
I'm like, right. And he's, he's this like amazing leader. And like the warden of the prison has like books that he wrote and shit. And he discovers that the, the bad shit's happening at the prison. And so he mobilizes all the prisoners. Right. <laughs> and yeah. like, and becomes a gen, like a general to the, and the whole thing, it, it, there, there's this, there's this amazing moment in this movie where uh, they have to get all the guards out of the mess hall so that they could have a, like, a, like their meeting. Right. And they get mm-hmm. the guards out and this general guy who's played by Robert, the brilliant Robert Redford stands up like on the table or something and was like, gentlemen, I propose we take this castle and everyone fucking cheers. And it's a big, yeah. cause every, every, like people, like people are mysteriously dying and stuff and like they've had enough and shit. And, and the, 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 just the, now he's like, we're fucking doing this. There's a moment kind of like that with Omega where she pulls the thing out of her sleeve just enough for them to see. And she's like, Oh, we're escaping this bitch. And the kids like, you can see like the green boys like, yeah, fucking yes, let's do it. I, I have to interrupt you for a complete non sequitur. Do it. Uh, the, the last castle grossed twenty seven million. Its budget was seventy two million. Yeah, it was a, is um, uh, largely seen as a flop. Um, <laughs> it was by dictionary definition, yeah. it was a flop. Uh, it is, and I stand by this, a fantastic movie. Okay, it's one that I'll probably make you watch at some point. So, the Bad Batch and Rampart get to Imperial Station zero zero three. There's a fun little scene on the transport where Rampart's like, I can't wear this Imperial uniform. Oh, yeah. Captain. Yeah. They're like, you've been demoted, bitch. Deal yeah. with it. Like, God, I hate clothes. You, you can tell. Because of course he would say that. Yeah. Fucking bigot. And you can tell, like, Crosshair's like, how fucked are we if I shoot him? <laughs> like, if I just shoot him in the head, how fucked are yeah. we? And Hunter's like, this, like, we need him a little bit. Yeah. So they, they pull up to Imperial Station 3. Um, they have their little squabble about the the uniform, and um, so they like they have a plan. They're gonna, I think they're gonna go find a transport that is going to Tantus. They're gonna hack their their computer, get the coordinates, and then go right. Yeah. So uh, they clean all their armor, to clean all the markings off their armor and shit, and um, they the, the Rampart puts on the lowly captain uniform, uh, and they they go out. Uh, onto the base immediately stopped by an imperial officer uh who's like what the fuck are you guys doing and like you even though you can't see crosshair's face you know he's <laughs> thinking how fuck are we if i shoot him in the head <laughs> right yeah so um rampart's able to to uh, like to draw on his one like career skill of being an absolute cock to everyone yeah and and does that to this guy he's like i am a fucking captain and he's like oh i'm very sorry and he's like get the fuck out of my face so um they they figure out at one point that um they like they can't just download the coordinates right uh and i can't rem- remember exactly why techno babble it doesn't yeah matter. so they're like okay new plan what if we attach our ship to their ship and just and just go to Tantus with them and so someone is i can't remember who but one of them's like echo has to go on board and disable the proximity right because you're you're like yeah they're like you know if we go and attach to them like they're gonna know that that's not something that even if you don't have sensors like they're probably gonna hear it right and it's like don't worry about it i got this fucking robo dildo arm i'll fix it right exactly which by the way there is a fucking hilarious scene before they do this with wrecker because he, like, they can't have a giant fucking 10-year-old following them around during this mission, right? Yeah. It draws way too much attention. So they're like, you stay here, watch the ship, and, and monitor the comms. It's like, perfect. And he's sitting there with his fucking feet up, and that same... Like, fucking around on his cell phone. <laughs> right. Um, that same officer comes by and was like, you know what? I did some checking into this, and th- there's something weird about this ship. Can you, t- like, tell me where, uh, um, like, where, where the fuck is your captain? And Wrecker's like, he's uh, captaining somewhere <laughs> that yeah. isn't here. And he's like, yeah, I, I need you to show me, like, where, where, like, show me the paperwork. And he's like, the paperwork's right in here. In, it's right here in, in, in the glove box. In fact, let me go ahead and step in. I'm going to close the door. 
and then just like yeah, I don't think you think he, it's like off screen he just like beats the shit out of him yeah. and I like how he gets on the phone he's like guys I had to hit an Imperial and they're like no we had to shoot somebody too it's okay <laughs> so anyway th- there's a gr- there's a great action scene at the end where Echo figures out the proximity thing mm-hmm. um Right at the last second. Metal Gear solids his way onto the ship and yeah. then starts hacking the thing and has to stun a guy. And Yeah. Uh, right, at, right at the last second, doing a fucking cool maneuver, Hunter flips the, cool. the ship around, attaches to the bottom. They go to hyperspace mm-hmm. and hopefully kill Rampart because they their mission's complete. They should. Yeah. Like, he, they have done, like, he has done everything they need him to do. Hopefully, Crosshair just shoots him in the head. Yeah, or but, just, like, like, they shove him out the airlock or something. Because it's a kid's show, you know that they're not, and he's going to survive, and he's going to yeah. rat them out to the Empire, right. and everything's going to go. Yeah, cause, yeah they're not going to redeem Rampart, because he's way too much of a mustache twirling he's bad guy. He's a fucking racist. They yeah. can't redeem him. It'd be really funny if they put him in the, put him in the airlock, the door closes, they're looking at him, like, pounding on the glass. <laughs> And fucking Hunter's like, you're going to die a captain, motherfucker, and hits the button. Just <laughs> shoots him out into space. That's a little bit dark for a kid's show. Tell me that there wouldn't be... Tell me that that wouldn't hurt Rampart to his core. His, the, his last his last moment alive, realizing he's wearing a captain's uniform when, <laughs> when he dies. I'm not saying it wouldn't be poetic justice. I'm just saying you can't do that on a kid's show, yeah, which the Bad Batch ostensibly yeah, is. Uh, let's take uh, let's take just a couple of minutes. Um, th- we we're talking about. Okay, I, I've watched two episodes of Fallout. Yeah, I, I, we're not going to. I'm not going to spoil any of it or anything. Um, so I, I did watch all of Fallout, and let me preface this with saying that um, I am a fan of open world games mm-hmm. if they cater to my interests. Mm-hmm. Right. So, like Batman: Arkham Knight. I, I, I love, love Batman. Batman. I love that game, right? Um, Red Dead Redemption 2 I d- uh, came out when, right after John and I started watching Westworld. So it was, Cowboys, let's go! It was like Westworld the game, and I was like, yeah. you know what? This is fucking awesome. Which, by the way, Red Dead Redemption 2 had an open world game. Yeah. Without a season pass, without any of that bullshit, and the microtransaction in the game was a currency called gold mm-hmm. that you could earn in game or you mm-hmm. could pay for it. Hmm. And you could only spend it on cosmetic items. Wow. What a concept. Yeah, just saying. And that game did real fucking well. So uh so like Red Dead I liked. Batman I liked. Um uh, Starfield I was excited for. It turns out it was a shit you, game. You tried. Yeah. Uh, but it was like that's in space and shit, right? Yeah. My friend Robbie was like, "I want you to play Fallout 76 because I want to play, you know, I, I want someone to play this with." And I was like, "Okay." So I started checking out Fallout. I was like, "I don't care about this. This does not cater to my interests. I don't care about the whole 1950s aesthetic and everything." Yeah, the, the, the setting is the nuclear apocalypse everyone was worried about in the 50s actually happened. Yeah, isn't that wacky? Right, and I'm just like, I don't give a fuck about this. So I was like, pass. I'm sorry, Robbie. I love you, but I'm not playing this game. Yeah. So when I found out that they were doing a show, I was like, what the fuck yeah. ever? Because like the other video game adaptions they've done have all been kind of bad. Like Last Halo. Of Us? Uh, that's the, kind of a big exception. But you're right. Um, Halo. It is colossally terrible. Yeah, the Resident Evil movies are all bad. really bad pretty bad it just like so, like a lot of the times that like they they fail the transfer of that over to to live action that being said this show is fucking great hmm. uh i watch it and uh first first of all i i love all of the actors in it there's a fucking what's her name from uh yellow jackets yep uh who plays jackie who's really good uh, one of the guys from severance at least in the first episode. The the black guy with the beard and glasses. The black guy with the beard and glasses. Oh no no no, you're right. In yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um right. He's he's in the vault. Um f- uh one of the one of the real funny characters from Righteous Gemstones plays the ghoul. I don't know if you've gotten that far. Um Oh yeah, him, yeah. There's a guy from uh there's a guy from uh, Desperate Housewives, that's in okay. it. plays plays Jackie's. It's not her real name. It's just the character I know her from yeah. from Yellow Jackets. Plays her father. Um, 
who like a really good cast uh music composed by raymond jawadi who did the game of thrones and, and house of the dragon i do like the music I, mm-hmm. I i like that he uses like recognizable themes for for each character mm-hmm. yeah um, uh it looks fine th- there's a couple stunts and cg things that i'm like that could have been done However, there are going to be a couple of things that you see where you're like, holy shit, that looks really fucking good. Uh, this show is hilarious in spots. Mm-hmm. That I, like, d- so you watched the first two. Yep. So you've seen the whole gag about uh, cousin stuff? Yes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. That's really funny. And thre- it is also a legitimate concern yeah. when you're locked in a, an underground vault with 20 other people right. for 200 years. Yeah. Um, and uh, like throughout the show, the, a lot there's a lot of levity. Uh, there's a there's um, F- Fred Armisen is is in a cameo appearance that made me laugh so fucking hard I almost pissed myself. The guy that played Ben Linus and Lost is in it. Uh, it's just like a bunch of really great cast, and it's funny and it's gory. And it's uh, um, there. There are a lot of philosophical issues about morality and mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. And the the main character on this journey, like wanting to make the world better and relying on this golden rule about you know do unto others as, as you know you you would have them do to you. And mm-hmm. um, and then realizing that there's such a huge difference between her world and the real world. Mm-hmm. And she goes on on this adventure that it it really is a coming of age thing in in a lot of sense where she learns how the world works right and the, the, there can be plenty of allegories um, about it and everything um, I I was really surprised at how good it was and it, it, I mean it was it's not like the best show I've ever seen but it was enough for me to to sit and watch all the way through. And, and I didn't feel like at the end uh, that it was a waste of time. I thought it was very well acted. The music was good. The plot's good. Uh, and they are almost certainly going to do a second season. I, I'm kind of lukewarm on it so far. Um, the, Keep right. You didn't like WandaVision either. For, that, for the first two episodes. That, that was different. The, the first two episodes of WandaVision, I actively despised because I, I was so fucking bored. Yeah. But in, in this case, um, again, I don't care about the setting. Fallout's never been something I've been interested in, and the aesthetic just doesn't do anything for me. Um, the gore is actually enough that it's bothering me. Oh, really? Like, not to the point where I'm, like, getting nauseous or anything, but just, like, I don't really want to see the insides of people's bodies. I, I would prefer it if the... the if there was a little bit less ultraviolence, and you, like the you know what's the, the crazy thing about the gore ex- ex- extremely minor spoiler. There's a scene where one guy like gets his foot shot off, and then they have to put a prosthetic on yeah. that like liquefies the yeah. rest of his lower leg. That's really fucking gross. But, I didn't need to see that. But it was really funny though. A little. It bit. just it's so ridiculous. They're like, oh, well, let's get you a new foot, and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, how are you gonna get him a new foot? She pulls out a box. With fucking feet in it and shit like that. That was funny. Like it was a really it was, funny it was gag. Funny up to that point. That's the guy. Fucking... That's the guy that plays Ben Linus, by the way, in Lost. The guy yes. that had to get a new foot. Yeah, I, I, I'm aware. Yeah. It, but yeah, like good cast. The writing so far is fine. I like the music. Yeah. The CG and, and stunts are mostly pretty good. There's a couple that I'm kind of squinting at, which is weird because I'm usually pretty forgiving of of bad CG, but. There, there's some really good stuff though as well. Yeah. So I, I would like give, give it a good shot. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Like there's nothing okay. you can do. About I'll that. finish watching this if you watch X Men '97. I was planning to anyway, so there's no way I can lose this. Okay. So, uh, sure, yes, I'll, I'll make that Sounds deal. Good. Yeah. All right, cool. That's the end of our show, folks. Um, we're going to be back here in just a few minutes with some Battlefront, I believe. So I hope to see you then, uh, and then join us on Sunday at seven for Gungans and Dragons our uh, weekly Star Wars tabletop RPG uh, that will also be a ton of fun.